Today I'm going to teach you about collisions and triggers inside Unity because this is something we use quite frequently in order to do something whenever we hit another game object inside our game. So it's just kind of neat to know about. So as you can see, I have a small project set up just so you can kind of see what is going on here when we do actually do stuff with collisions and triggers. I have a player and a ball that has a rigid body 2D and a box collider on both of them. One thing to mention here is that inside the rigid body 2D of both my player and my ball, I did actually set a collision detection to continuous because otherwise you might actually risk them just kind of facing a bit into each other once they collide. So we want to make sure we have a continuous collision detection on. And then of course I did also set the interpolate to interpolate just so we had some smooth movement going on when the game objects actually move around inside our game. So I do also have a player controller script attached to my player. We're not going to talk too much about what I have in here when it comes to the movement because we have talked about a couple of different ways to move game objects by now. But I will just briefly go over just to have an idea about what the player controller has inside of it. So right now, as you can see, I have a rigid body component that I grabbed off my player and I simply assigned it to my rigid body field so I can actually do something with it. And then I simply created movement using a velocity. So inside my move player method down here at the bottom, I just simply set the rigid body dot velocity to whatever my input is on the keyboard. So we can actually see if I'm moving or not. And then I just simply make my player move using velocity. So that's basically what I just did in here. So with that said, what I have so far inside the game when I press play and actually move around is that you can see that right now I can move my player and I can hit the ball and it actually rolls off a little bit. So what I want to do is when I hit the ball, then I want something to happen. So what I can do is I can actually go ahead and go inside my code. And it is very important to mention here that in order to get a detection when it comes to collision between two different game objects, there has to be a rigid body 2D or just a rigid body if you're in 3D on one of these two game objects. And then of course you do also need to have a collider on both game objects so they can actually hit each other so we can actually register that they hit each other. Uh, but it is important that you have a rigid body on one of them and then a collision on both of them. So going down to the bottom here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a built-in method that we have just like we have with the fixed update and the update and the start method. Uh, we have another built-in method called on collision enter. I'm just going to start writing on collision enter and then you can actually see it pops up here. And essentially what we have here is we don't actually need to have the private here, just like with any of the other methods. This is just private by default, just so you don't get confused about the fact that this is private because we, we've talked about this. We covered this in an early episode, right? Um, so essentially this is set to a void type method, which means that we don't return any sort of data. And then it's going to be named on collision enter 2D. If you're in 3D, then it's just going to be named on collision enter. And this is a name that it has to be named this way. Way because this is just like with the update method and the fixed update and the start and awake and all these methods here, that this is a method that is built into our namespace. So we have to make sure that uh, we call it by this name. And then inside the parentheses, we have a parameter which is set to having a name as collision. We can just call this one COL if you wanted to. We don't have to call it collision. Um, but this is set to a collision 2D data type. And this we can't change. So this has to stay the same. Essentially, whenever we hit another game object inside the game with the player now, it is going to assign that game object to the collision variable. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can actually go ahead and say, I want to debug.log the name of the game object that we're actually hitting. So I can go in here and I can say, I want to grab the collision, which is going to be the game object that we hit, dot game object, dot name, save it. And if I were to go inside my game here, you can actually see that inside the console, we're going to get the name of the game object that we're going to collide with. So I press play. And then you can see first we get the ground because my player started by hitting the ground. And then if I were to hit the ball, you can see that now it says ball inside the, uh, inside the console down here. Uh, so essentially we can detect what kind of game object that we're colliding with by grabbing the name of that particular game object. We do also have something called on collision exit. So just to go down here, we can say on collision exit 2D. And essentially what this is going to do is that it's just going to, it's just going to run this method once we exit the collided object. So when we hit it, we do something and then when they bounce off each other, then we do something else. So I can go inside here and I can say, I want to instead write out um, enter because we just want to get some sort of message here. And then once we exit, I'm going to say exit. So we're just going to go into the game and you will notice that it's going to say enter immediately because we're going to hit the ground. Just ignore that for now. So if we were to go in, it's going to say enter. Let's just go and clear the console. Once I hit the ball, 
it is going to say enter and exit because I entered the ball and then they bounced off each other and then we got exit. With that said, let's actually go and talk about how to detect specific game objects so we don't detect the ground every single time. So would it go back inside my code here? What I can do is I can go in and create an if statement. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that if my collision dot game object dot name is equal to ball, then go ahead and write this or do whatever code I wanted to do inside my collision enter 2D method here. Same thing we can do for down here. So I'm just gonna copy, paste it in, and I want to check for a ball. So if this is not a game object that has a name as ball, then don't do anything. So I'm go back in here. And what you're gonna notice is that once we actually hit the ground at the very beginning, we don't get anything inside the console because the ground doesn't have a name as ball. But if it were to hit the ball, then something happens. We can also do something based on tags. There's a couple of different ways you can do this, but just to, to show a couple of different ways. So what I can do is I can click on my ball and I'm gonna go into tags at the very top here inside the inspector, go down to add tag. I'm just gonna add a tag called ball. Save this one, go into my ball again, click on the tags, set this one to ball, just so we have a tag for this game object here. Go inside my code and I'm going to check for a tag instead of a name. And in this sort of way, you can have many different game objects inside your game with different names. So if I were to actually rename my ball to something else, I can call it ball rolling or something, just so we don't have it as ball. Just to kind of demonstrate my point here. So if I were to click play, you can see that even though we don't have that name, it is still going to register the hit because right now it has a tag set to ball. And of course you can do many different things with the collision in here. I could also go in and say instead of debugging, uh, let's actually go ahead and do something with this game object here. So I could say, I could say I wanted to grab the collision dot game object dot get components. I could then go in and get the sprite renderer and then just go ahead and disable that if I wanted to. So I can say dot enabled, set that one equal to false. So essentially I'm just turning off the visibility of this game object here once I hit it. So I can go back into the game, click play. And once we actually hit the circle, you should see it turn invisible. So boom, and it just kind of like disappears. And you can see we have an unticked sprite renderer over here on the side here because this is actually what determines if we can see the sprite or not. But now we also have something called a trigger inside Unity because in some cases we don't want to do something when two objects hit each other. Like in this case here, this would actually work great for, let's say my player shooting some bullets at some enemies and then once the bullets hit the enemies, then I might want to, you know, destroy those enemies. So I, I can do that inside using a collision detection. In the same sense, I can also do something where my player jumps on a platform that is standing still. And then once the player hits the platform, then the platform starts moving. We can do that using collision as well. Uh, but let's say I want to do something using triggers because triggers work slightly different. So if I were to go ahead and just sort of disable my ball here so we can't see it, and instead I'm going to go ahead and enable my wall. In this example here, I do also have a box collider on this wall here, but instead I ticked on this little thing here called is trigger inside the inspector. So you have this little thing here you can tick on and off. As a default, it's just going to be off, but I'm just gonna go ahead and enable it here. What this is going to do is that when my player moves into this wall here, I'm just going to face right through it. You can see we're not actually colliding with it, even though we do have a collision on this wall here. I think the best way to describe it is, are these two game objects touching each other? If so, then they're triggering. So what I can do is I can go inside my code and I'm just gonna go ahead and save this if statement because we might use it for later. So I'm just gonna delete everything we have here. And instead, I'm going to do a on trigger enter 2D. And just like with collisions, if you're working in 3D, then this has to be a non 2D version of it, just so you're aware of it, because some people do work in, in 3D and not 2D. Uh, so the same way, like this is the exact same thing, we have the on trigger enter 2D, which is a built-in method. We do have the collision here. So if we were to go in and say, I want to check for the collision dot game object dot tag, and I can actually go ahead and say, I want to search for a wall. And instead of a tag, I'm just gonna do name here. Then I want to do something to this wall here. So in this case, here, I'm just going to go ahead and debug dot log and say I want to write test or something inside the console. So if we were to go back inside the game and actually press play, you can see that now when we do actually enter this wall here, it is going to write test inside the console. You can see we can actually repeat it. 
by, by doing this here. So with this, let's talk about when you would actually use a trigger inside your game. Let's say, for example, you want some enemies to spawn in once the player gets to a certain point inside your level, then you can use something like this as a trigger to see if a player has reached a certain point inside the level. So what I can do on the wall here, is I can actually turn off the sprite renderer so we can't see the wall, but there still is a trigger detection here. So what I can do once I press play, you're still gonna notice that once I hit the wall, it is still going to write test inside the console. So even though we can't see it, it kind of works like a barrier that checks if the, the player has reached that point inside the level. And then inside the code, we could just simply spawn in some enemies or something, you know, something needs to happen once you reach that certain point. But you also have another example where instead of a wall, we can actually go ahead and enable a light switch. So let's say my game involves a house that has a bunch of light switches inside of it. And you have to be able to go up to the light switch and click the light switch and turn off some lights inside the house. Then by doing so, by taking something like this light switch I have here, I can actually go ahead and set this one as a trigger. And going inside my code, I can check for a light switch, you know, by tagging it a certain thing. So let's actually go and search for a tag that is equal to light switch. Then I'm gonna copy that tag name. I'm gonna go back inside Unity. I'm gonna go inside my tags up here, add tag. I'm just gonna add a tag called light switch. And then I can add that tag to many different light switches inside my game just to you know be able to add many different light sources inside the game. And then I can just go ahead and tag this one as light switch. Then if I were to actually go inside the game and enter the light switch, you can see that, oh, we get test inside the console because I'm now entering the light switch. But in this case, you might want to do something else as well because we did talk about on collision exit, but we do also have on trigger exit because we want to be able to detect if we can click the light switch. So if I have a Boolean inside my code, which I do actually have at the top here, I have a Boolean here called can interact, which is right now set to false. So what I can do instead is I can take that Boolean and inside my light switch, you know, tag here, if I'm entering the light switch, is I can set that one equal to true, because now I can actually interact with the light switch. Then what I can do is I can go inside and actually write a on trigger exit 2D and say I want to do the same thing, but instead I want to set this one equal to false. So if I were to exit the light switch again, then I'm going to disable the ability to interact with the light switch. So with this, what I can do is I can go inside my update method. And right now I did actually already create some code here, which simply goes in and says, if I press the space key on my keyboard and I right now have a interact set to true, then I can turn on the light switch, which of course in a actual game would actually be to turn on some actual lights inside your game. But in this case, we're just gonna console lock something. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and go inside my game, restart it, just so we can test this out. And what you're gonna notice is that right now I'm pressing space, but I'm not actually touching the, the light switch, so nothing is happening. If I go into the light switch and press space, oh, then I can turn on the light switch and I can just keep doing that. But if I exit again, it's no longer working. So in this sort of sense, you can go in and you can turn on a light switch and then once you're not touching it anymore, you're not gonna be able to turn on the light switch anymore. So this is just a very neat way to use switches inside your game. So with that said, uh, we talked about collisions, we talked about triggers. There's of course some other things we could talk about in here like you know what effectors are and something called composite. Um, but we're just gonna focus on triggers and collisions today. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and you learned a lot from it and I'll see you in the next video.